Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, I have nothing to project on the projector. And uh, I am a writer. I'm not a musician. But I'm going to talk about music. And uh, first, I have a book called The Abyssinian Boy. It's, um, it's a multicultural story about India and Nigeria. I lived in India for five years. And I was writing. I have a very deep interest in um, anthropology and the way people think and react to things. So I decided to live in India in a very small village called Kurushetra where nobody spoke English. I had to survive by sign language. And then after six months, I was able to finish my book. And then I went back to Nigeria and decided to go to university. I got an admission into university to study anthropology. And then after two years, I dropped out. Because I felt two years were enough for me. When I dropped out from university, I moved back to India. And I started a company which I envisioned to promote Nigerian music in Asia and in Europe. But it's been a very difficult journey in the sense that I do not understand the taste, the kind of music Asians want to have played by an African. And I do not understand how Europeans will react when an Nigerian musician is playing on stage. But I've also come to realize that the most successful Nigerian musicians are musicians who are supported by the Europeans. We have people like uh, Shade, we have Seal, we have Neka, we have the Fela Kuti family, we have um, we have a new guy called uh, Bez who joined Sandbox. Sandbox were, uh, is a global community of young innovators under 30. We had our first summit here in Portugal in January, and I was there. Uh, but he couldn't make it, and he was supposed to come and perform as well. He just got signed to Universal Music Publishing, and he's like one of the best voices we have in the industry. But the problem is there is a bureaucratic rule which tries to demoralize Nigerian artists and musicians from coming to Europe, which is the embassies. They do not believe you, that you're going to promote your art in Europe. They do not think it's necessary. They think you should get stuck in your country. But the essence of opening borders in Europe, where you have a Schengen territory, is to let people have a borderless society where they can actually sell whatever thing they have. Now, what happens to the African who has I know, a very large audience in Africa, but the audience is this kind of audience who wants you to come and perform free? When a show promoter in Nigeria organizes a show, he starts getting phone calls from his family members for free passes and tickets. And his friends will always call him for free passes as well. So he has 12 tickets, he gives out 11 free, and he has one ticket to sell. And if you do not do it, you get ostracized by your family. The problem is not about economy, it's about the mentality. Yes. The most successful African or Nigerian musicians live in Europe or come here often. Not because we don't have a large audience in Africa, but because we do not appreciate art there. We feel art is for, uh, free. And so, if you're a writer, you have to publish your book and distribute copies free. If you're a musician, you have to do your music and go for concerts free. Now, what I'm asking for and why I'm doing all the trips I've been doing around Europe is to have collaborations with people who can come and promote the, the talents we have in Nigeria 
because we have a huge talent. And the problem is not about how much more we are appreciated in Europe, but how we can get these talents displayed on a global scale, on a global stage that will definitely bring the stars out of them. Right now, um, we have, we also have a problem of structure, where I come from. It is demeaning, yes, but there is no structure because the musician is his own manager, is his own publicist, is his own everything, he has no agent, and nothing works for him. He gets depressed, he needs to find a job. His family gets frustrated and they start uh, worrying him. And the moment this happens, I mean, what else but to leave his talent and find something else, or maybe start working in a cubicle in a bank and count people's cash for them. So, but if they are encouraged by people who have the right channels to encourage them, definitely there will be no, there will be no criminality, there will be no thuggery, there will be no, no kidnapping. So the moment we can extend our hands and support artists from Nigeria or the African continent, or we become rich ourselves because I know when Fela Kuti kids or the family members come to Europe to perform, there is a very large uh, crowd waiting for them. Or maybe uh, when we have uh, Neka, sorry. When we have Neka performing uh, around Europe, there's um, a degree of uh, tension with his uh, her fans in, in Europe which Jose Fidago, who happens to be a very top Portuguese actor, is also a fan of Neger, and I found that very amusing. So, I'm just going to end by just pleading for a very strong support for the Nigerian artist who has worked his ass off, but has nothing to show for it. Thank you very much. <laughs>